Okay, respected chair, and dear ladies and gentlemen, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Panindra Babu Kasi, currently working as a postdoctoral fellow at the Department of Medical Chemistry and Biochemistry. Today, I would like to give a, a short presentation on biodegradable polymer composite, PCL, PLGA, PLA for tissue engineering applications. In Simplify, we have synthesized some synthetic polymer composites for tissue engineering applications. Let us see what is tissue engineering. Tissue engineering is or regenerative medicine. It's simply formation of artificial tissues. It refers to the development of um, functional biological structures or functional tissues in a laboratory with a bunch of cells. The ultimate goal of tissue engineering is to, is to replace the damaged tissue with the developed functional biological structures. Tissue engineering is a multidisciplinary science. It contains the main branches like biological sciences, material sciences, and bioreactors. Biological sciences, the mainly the cells like stem cells, endothelial cells, or growth, growth factors or signaling molecules, which are useful for the development of tissue, and bioscaffold, which gives the, which provides the environment for the, for the, for the synthesis of tissues. Sometimes these bioscaffolds can degrade with the tissue, or, some, or it can remain throughout the life. And bioreactor, the physical and mechanical forces which will influence the cellular development. Let us see the revolutionary or important regenerative medicine by tissue engineering in last four de decades. In 1980s, the first time they they have reconstructed artificial skin when there is an extensive burn. So here in this paper, they quoted successful use of physiological acceptable artificial skin in the treatment of extensive burn injury. And in 1891. Living tissue formed in in vitro as they accepted as a skin equivalent tissue. They developed a, a skin equivalent tissue in in vitro. And like that, if you see the research and clinical development, there, are, there, there is an advanced uh, development in the tissue engineering for the construction of lung, heart, um, liver, and so many organs. And they have been also successfully implemented in the humans. There are some of examples like cartilage, bladder, small artery, and trachea. And here I can show you some interesting and efficient uh, technologies or development in the tissue engineering. They are the self-healing hydrogels. They are nothing but the cross-linked network of polymers, which are useful for the coronal reconstruction. 3D bioprinting, which is um, fabricated for the biomedical parts like bone, ear, and nose. And 3D scaffold fabrication, fabricated scaffolds used for cancer uh, cell trap, trap, liver cell ingrowth, and vessel repair. And the recent uh, development in tissue engineering is organ on chip. Organ on chip or a tissue or simply a tissue chip or this microprocessing cellular systems, which refers to the multi-channel, uh, three-dimensional um, cellular systems, which are connected with the uh, circuits, simulates the activity and physiology of entire organ. Simultaneously, there are organ on chips that are developed on liver, gut, lungs, heart, and bone marrow. Uh, recently, we have also seen the eye on chip. And general principle of tissue engineering. There are three important components in tissue engineering, cells and nutrients like say, signaling molecules and scaffolds, which are uh, combinedly engineer the artificial tissue or functional tissue. So here, here two factors influence, this, influence the uh, synthesis of the tissue. They are like scaffold degradation and cell growth. It is also importantly note that to achieve the inflammatory response is a, is a main important factor in tissue engineering. These are the main three steps, how they implement the uh, synthesis, uh, developed uh, tissues in the human, like in vitro culture, followed by in vitro implement, then in vitro culture, then in vivo implement, and finally the in vivo implement without cell. And my project aim is to develop a synthetic polymer composite material with excellent mechanical and biological properties for bone and skin tissue engineering. Let us see a, a small background of synthetic polymers. We know the cortical bone defect, uh, which simultaneously uh, wouldn't heal simultaneously. If there is a repair, it cannot, wouldn't, uh, it cannot uh, uh, heal simultaneously, which are caused by the injuries or disease or trauma and unable to self-repair or remodel. Then the bone, bone grafting, predominantly used for the bone repair. There are like two types, autograft and allograft. In autograft, we, we can extract the uh, tissues from a from one part, from, from anatomical part of one individual and installed in the same individual. Coming to allograft, like ex extract or harvest of the tissue from one individual and place into genetically different individual. 
autograft is well known for gold standard and that, and the main draw drawback in this autograft autograft is uh, there is a very limited source availability so then the synthetic polymers and natural polymers came into the picture in the, in the as a scaffolds and what are the main requirement for bone scaffolds it should be high compatibility to avoid immune response it should have surface chemistry so to support the cellular function it should be distributed and interconnected pores uh, for the cell infiltration and vascularization support it should be absolutely biodegradable to aid the knee tissue formation for bone tissue engineering it should have a property of osteoconductivity and i will show you the uh, the synthetic polymers which we have used in my project they are like first one is pcl poly e caprolactone which is highly water soluble which having the repeated units of one ester group and five methylene groups which are formed by the ring opening polymerization and degradation occurs by the surface or bulk hydrolysis of ester linkage and the degradation of pcl is converted by the hydrolysis to e hydrocaprolic acid then it enters into the estic ester co enzyme and pcl is also widely studied for its uh, applications in drug delivery uh, packing material or prosthetic and sutures another molecule we have used is polylactic go glycolic acid plga plga is formed by the condensation of lactic acid and glycolic acid different forms of plg can be obtained by using <laughs> different molar ratios of lactic acid and glycolic acid plga represents like 75 25 uh, 70% of lactic acid and 25% glycolic glycolic acid physical properties can be tried here that's the important step is for use of synthetic uh, polymers we can alter or we can change the physical properties of the polymers for for our uh, particular use and uh, and all these synthetic polymers are approved by the FT, fda sorry fda for drug application it is also extensively studied in tissue engineering and plg is combined with hydroxyapatite and calcium phosphate for the bone repair applications and the last one we have used is pla polylactic acid it is, it can be formed by the um, polymerization of lactide or condensation of lactic acid and this compound is also widely studied for the tissue engineering drug delivery switcher and implement and diagnostic and medical packing purposes and this is another important step in the <coughs> tissue engineering like fabrication techniques uh, scaffold fabrication techniques to fabricate the scaffold like solvent leaching in solvent leaching the polymer the, the polymer is mixed with the solvent and it homogeneously mixed and heated and poured into the silical mold then the salt leaching is deno with the deionized water finally we will get the disclike polymer scaffolds in gas forming we, we will get a porous scaffold uh, oligomer Uh, algomer by nucleation process here the the gas gases like carbon dioxide and ammonia are used to extract or uh, to remove the uh, chemical solvents in freeze dry drying starts with the freezing of the polymer in phase separation the polymer and solvent is mixed with the thermal energy and with the latest te technique is the melt blending that is like little advanced technique to blend the two polymers so we have used this melt blending for for synthesis of our composites we have used pcl and plg plga PLG, and pcl plga we have developed six compositions and in pcl and plga we have developed three compositions and in pcl and pla we have developed another three three important uh, synthetic composite polymers and now i would like to present some of the important findings or outcomes uh, which have i found in my in our project and mechanical properties are the are very important and essential essential in tissue engineering to see the utility of uh, scaffolds otherwise if there is a improper property in the scaffold or the internal strain that can lead the damage of the inner parts of the tissues so it's also important to measure the mechanical properties and here in the a and b there are like a tensile strain curves of pclp la composites or c here you can see the pcl having strain of 35 mpa and stress of uh, 11 points and the composite films have declined so it's concluded that tensile strength of composite film is decent and these films can be conveniently used for tissue engineering applications and characterization of pcl plg pla uh, films using ftir and ftir was used to see the the perfect blending of pcl with plga in a we have a individual absorption spectra of pcl plg and pla in b we have like a composite absorption spectra 
And in EI, we have like 1724, 75, 75, 51, it is the carbonyl vibration stretches. In the composites, you can see the, the uh, it is split into two signet molecules. So it concludes that based on the spectral composition, it can be concluded that there is no reaction between PCL and PLGA and PLA occurred. And thermal analysis is another important uh, parameter in uh, tissue engineering to see the degradation of the scaffold. From this TGA thermogravitic analysis and uh, derivative thermogravitic curve shows that all the compositions are thermally stable and are able to withstand temperature of at least 245 Celsius. And we have also done high resolution sum images of PLA and PLA system. And you can see the, uh, the sum images PCL and PCL PLGA. And these are the composition uh, image, sum images. And it concludes that the addition of PLGA and PLA to PCL apparently improved the shape and size of the microsphere. Round particles with the diameter ranging from 6 and 18 micrometer were detectable, but numerous irregular microsphere with a rough surface were still observed. And swelling degree is another important factor which, which has to be done to see the uh, scaffold application in tissue engineering. And it refers to the composition and hydrophilic nature of the uh, scaffold. Here you can see the, the PCL having swelling behavior 81%, and surprisingly it is in the composition it got declined. And it concludes that the swelling percentage of PCA PLA 71 and was lower, was lower than the PCL. And in vitro biocompatibility, human dermal fibroblastocell cell lines are used to, to see the in vitro biocompatibility testing. And cell attachment and cell proliferation, and these are the two important factors which has to be done to see the, how the scaffold is integrated with the biological system. So we have done cell attachment studies for six hours and self proliferation test for one day, and, uh, like short proliferation and long proliferation for third day. In cell attachment studies, all the compositions from PCL, PLJ to PCL, ALEA3, were have shown increment cell growth comparing with PCL and TCP. In cell proliferation, it's, it's, it has shown that PCL and PLG A3 having uh, highest proliferation rate comparing with other uh, compositions. The visual comparison of the cell addition and cell proliferation was done by using crystal violet staining. That can be, you can see there, six hours and one day and third day, the cell proliferation rate and uh, attachment studies. So both PCL and PLJ and PCL and PLA can support sur cell survival, addition, and proliferation. So from the above results, I would like to uh, con uh, give some of these conclusions. The first one is PCL film showed a tensile strength of 11.0 MPa and tensile strength of 35. Addition of PG, PLG and PLA into the PCL matrix decreases in tensile strain. The spectra of composites conclude that no reaction between PCL and PLGA, PLA occurred. Compositions are thermally stable. The swelling percent of composite material lower than the PCL. The composites can support the in vitro cell survival, addition, and proliferation. Now I take this opportunity to, to acknowledge the following members in material engineering and biomaterial research group at Medical Chemistry and Biochemistry. Uh, I thank Dr. Babushka for his support and guidance in my research. I thank Dobra and Kulda and Yana and Petra and Lucy their help in the research. And I also extend my thank to Dr. Jagan Mohan Reddy. He's a senior, senior researcher at New Technologies Research Center. And I also extend my thanks to funding sources like, uh, like my junior funding from Charles University and Chepran and 4U Alliance. And finally, thank you for your kind attention.